but a children. Mirrors and cameras. This is one of the things that is hard for women to get used to. They're used to the mirror in the center of the car, and now they have to get acquainted with the mirrors and cameras that are on the sides of the vehicle. You cannot look directly behind. There are two types of mirrors, of course. This is the, the regular mirror. This is the one you can typically adjust with, with the electric. The convex, on the other hand, is something that has to be adjusted outside. The convex mirror is the one, though, that during the learning of the vehicle becomes extremely important. Whenever you look down the side of the vehicle, you should be able to see just a sliver of the side of the vehicle and on the main mirror. And the main mirror, of course, is looking down the road or behind us to see what is going on in the traffic. But the really important mirror is that, again, in the learning time, is the convex mirror. It's aimed down slightly. It gives you a view of whether or not you know, you're know you going to clip an island or clip a uh, curb coming around a curb. It also gives you a little bit of an education on where the stripes are and whether or not you're, and I use the term, centered up. Mirrors, again, you know, each side of the vehicle, it takes some time, and especially if there is a height, significant height difference between you and your partner. These mirrors, that convex mirror, often has to be readjusted, you know, whenever you get behind the wheel. Adjusting the mirrors, you know, this, this again is a important activity. If you come to a rest area and you're about to change drivers, sometimes you'll need to get out and again, manually, you know, adjust it up or down, in or out. Sight mounted cameras are a new uh, product on the market. I like them only because they give you a clearer view of the side of your vehicle, especially whenever you're going to be moving or changing lanes. Side-mounted cameras are good, but they do require a degree of readjustment of the eyes to catch what's in the uh, side-mounted or in the um, camera. But again, I want to emphasize, I can, please. This is again one of those intimidating areas. Driving straight ahead sometimes is not a big deal. But when you come to corners, there is an issue of how am I going to, and incidentally, we spent a great deal of money, as you can tell on this slide, trying to make the point that whenever you're about to make a corner, you know, the issue of, you know, this corner, this uh, area, and trying not to climb the curb as you make that turn or perhaps, you know, get into the, uh, knock down somebody that's at the intersection. Whenever you do approach, you know, there, there is that, how far do I go into the intersection before I turn? My message always is, go deeper than you think before you start making your turn. You usually get a little bit of laughter whenever this is, uh, slide comes up. Obviously, this, uh, is an interesting pet in the, uh, in the picture. Lane control. This is extremely important in the learning process. We hang out in so many ways. You know, we, we have an overhang. If you're in a Class A, you have the overhang in the front of the vehicle, from the front of the vehicle to the, or from the front axle to the front of the vehicle. You've got overhang in the back, which is from the rear axle to the rear of the vehicle. Overhang, though, is significant. Incidentally, there's one other, and it's called the underhang. Underhang is that which can get, uh, get you in trouble if you go across. And just imagine a speed bump, but imagine a speed bump that is very steep. The front axle goes over, again, speaking of a Class A, and the rear axle. Is, so you're straddling either side of the uh, bump the uh, speed bump and this can you can cause a lot of damage to the uh, underhang of the vehicle underhang swing out I know that a lot of vehicles when you go into an RV park you're going to see a lot of vehicles with damage on either the left or right rear 
this is typically a result of being in an island area in a service station. Whenever you're through fueling up, you pull forward. And whenever you pull forward, there is a tendency to want to turn the wheel to get out of the way of the traffic that may be you know, in front of the store or whatever. But whenever you crank that wheel, all of a sudden this, the rear of the vehicle, from the rear axle to the very rear of the vehicle, starts swinging into, in a lot of cases, the concrete devices that are now put out there to protect the, the uh, pump area. Again, I can master it. You know, I want to emphasize this throughout. You know, I can, and I want to. I frequently would like to have the people say, "I can." Hills, hills are very intimidating for, especially people learning for the first time. The hills, you know, again can be very long uphills. You know, and of course there are the obvious things. You know, looking down the side of the cliff. But the other side of it is that when you get into climbing hills, you need to do something that you frequently don't have to do in a car, especially with automatic transmissions. And that is, you know, you need to shift down. And whenever you need to shift down, uh, you know, that activity is something that you really need to spend some time getting acquainted with. Hills are especially difficult in a large vehicle because, again, they require shifting. George, how dangerous is sitting? Sitting. Sitting is, is again, it seems so mundane. Uh, you know, but if you are driving for four or five hours it continuously, continuously, there can be a significant problem. We had a friend that almost died because a clot formed in his leg, got up into his, uh, I think into his uh, heart, and just uh, he just about died. The issue again is that you cannot sit for prolonged periods of time at the age that we're at. We need to periodically get up, stretch, take a little bit of a walk. Rest areas are great for this purpose, but you know, if it isn't a rest area, find some place that you can pull off, get up from the wheel, and at least stretch and make sure that you're uh, safe. Pre-trip, double check. Whenever we are in the midst of preparing for a trip, you know, you need to check the vehicle and double check it. One of the things that I would think you would want to do is, again, uh, well, in our case, Valerie does the inside, I do the outside work. But then double check each other. Make sure that, you know, you've taken care of everything. We had an ind individual who came driving into a park in Durango, Colorado. Uh, she pulled in and she had been dragging a Honda behind her and she had the emergency brake on for I think it was a couple thousand miles. My point is that you need to double check each other. Vehicle specifications. We're in a vehicle eight and a half feet wide. Most of our vehicles now are eight and a half feet wide. It's 102 inches. Our in our case, Valerie and my RV is a, a 41 feet 6 inches long. It's an important specification. We weigh 34,250 pounds. That's 17 tons. That's the important thing because we're going to be encountering bridges and, and uh, places where there are weight restrictions. Height. Our height is 12 feet, foot 9 inches. 12 foot 9 inches is really critical, especially whenever you come to a bridge like this. Why did this happen? Why did this happen? You know, it's so clear. You know, it's 8 feet. It was marked 8 feet. Why did this? And incidentally, what I'm trying to do right now is overemphasize this point. This is the one that is so tragic whenever it happens. This guy apparently forgot that he was driving, you know, with this R or the uh, towable device behind him and, and of course at some point just was not cognizant of the fact that you know he had the the uh, vehicle behind him. Be alert. Bridges sometimes and tunnels are sometimes marked with things like this. Well, this one's plenty of room for just about every size vehicle that we drive. 
but sometimes these measurements can be a lot less. Sometimes it may actually require carefully, carefully going down the center of the uh, arch uh, bridge or tunnel. You know, so often when we travel into the northeast part of the U.S., you know, there are so many height restrictions and weight restrictions because, again, many of these bridges and places have were constructed many, perhaps a hundred years ago, and they're trying to maintain the beauty of the old uh, with the need, you know, to accommodate some of our large vehicles. Again, I can do it, George. I can do it. I want to make sure that people keep 